Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actress Karen Pittman with me. So welcome, Karen. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Made it. Too opinionated. That's right. That's right. And is it, yeah, it's in the title, so you can just let it fly. <laughs> let those opinions fly. <laughs> I'm going to hold off until later in the... That's right. That's right. We'll build to it. We'll build up. We'll build up to it. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited to speak with you. My pleasure. It's my pleasure. We were uh, lucky enough to speak with uh, Nestor a oh. couple of months back. Yeah. And he, I, I, sent him a, I sent him a note. I was like, hey, I've got uh, Karen coming on. And he said, she is the best. She's the best to work with. He oh. had nothing but nice things to say. Well, I pay him very well to do that. <laughs> He's a nice person. He really I was is. a I was a big fan of his wife Shannon's, yeah. and and she had a book coming out, so so I had I had her on the show. It's an incredible book. It's a great, great, so great good. Book. It's a tribute to selflessness and love yeah. and honesty and uh, and and just real integrity of love and relationship in their yeah. marriage and. If you want a really inspiring tale about what it is to be married and how to get yeah. over yourself, it's a great book to read. Oh, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. And I, I, I had the best time talking with her, but I was not going to ask about Nestor. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that. But then at, near the end, she's like, yeah, Nestor was really upset that he didn't get invited on the show. And I thought, <laughs> oh, we can fix that. We can have Nestor on. But the, you know, the best part about, talking with him is all he wanted to talk about was her book. Yeah. That was, I thought that was really sweet. Well, when I do interviews with him, all he wants to do is talk about how great the work I do is in the show. And yeah, you know, he's just a really great guy. I mean, I got to say that's true for all the cast members on the morning show. I mean, they're really no, what a cast. To, yeah. It's great people to work with great people to watch work. You know, you get to see <laughs> them in their process, witness them in their work and, and uh, and to just sort of kiki behind the scenes and see what's going on with their lives. It's always, you know, we're not one of those casts that's out of the club and that's hanging right. out at the openings. You know, <laughs> families. We all go home. We all are very committed to the work that we're doing and telling a really good story. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how we all got together or how they they fixed it up like that. But but that's uh, that's the kind of the community that we that we are in the, on the show. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's it's such a great cast. And like individually, we love everybody. Mm -hmm. And now you put them all together and we're like, well, that that's a show. Yeah, you gotta yeah. watch. Agree. Yeah. So so poor Mia, she finally got her promotion and, and now and now the ratings are tanking. Yeah. 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 Well, no. Unfair. It's unfair. <laughs> But it, it sort of is the way that it goes. I mean, I think yeah. uh, for a lot of people, I mean, I mean, tons of people probably understand this. You're given the chance of a lifetime. Yeah. So you're people of color, you're finally given your chance to to do the thing, but you get it when the opportunity is like at its worst. Like you, and you gotta, <laughs> you know, the Herculean task of figuring it all out. Like you gotta figure out the thing right. when it's at its worst and prove your mettle. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, you gotta fix it up. You have to do your best. Like you have to do more than yeah. your best. And um, it was a real. Uh, it was a, when Carrie Aaron, the the showrunner, presented the idea of she's going to get a show, but it's all good. It's 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 very early in the situation. It's already right. turning shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but to figure out how to get it back on top, and the one savior for her is this one woman that she actually doesn't really care for and doesn't get along with and that's Alex yeah. Levy. I mean how 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 you know how much of that is life. I have a friend in Ayad Akhtar and he says, you know, Karen, I can work with everybody. I can I can work with people I can work with people I don't like. In fact I prefer working with people I don't like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just about the business. And um and so I I definitely had that in mind when uh you know Mia had to turn around and work with Alex Levy, a, a host yeah. that really wasn't all that excited about working with. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, uh, we, we watched the the new episode last night, uh, yeah. uh, which was episode two. Yep. 
And that what dinner party, that? dinner party is so stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Arthur, it was oof. be nice and be kind, not say too much, say the right thing, say a little bit, you know. Yeah. I love your, I love your, your acting because you know, I've seen you in a lot of different things, but you always, you, you give so much without saying anything. Mm. Like you can really see a lot just from the expressions you're making. And, well, and the way you're that kind that's of... how human beings are, right? Like, I mean, mm -hmm. we're not, sure. we talk a lot. By the time you hear us talking, we've already said a lot with, with our body language, right? Mm. My mother would always say body language is everything. And I think that's definitely true when you're creating a character. And so yeah, say a lot with a look or with a look down or, you know, how, <laughs> you know, how <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think that you're right. A dinner party is ripe for those kinds of oh nonverbal cues, right? Like, yeah, it was tense. Like you could feel the tension. Yeah, and I think a lot of that had to do with also that Bradley hadn't been at work, and you know yeah. she had bounced out, and it was just an untenable position. Like they had no choice but to sort of maneuver around these very important, you know. Right. <laughs> which is what, you know, American television morning news is about, you know, there are these extraordinarily popular uh, personalities that are there. Right. And that's where the real, that's where the real interesting drama is. I yeah. mean, you know, with what's going on with Gail King or Robin Roberts or Savannah Guthrie right. or Hope <laughs> Hope. you know, these are women you're like, mm, what's happening with them? Yeah, what's going on with them? <laughs> sad, you know? That's really interesting to people. I think that's part of why the morning show is so, you know, cool. I mean, we explore some aspects of journalism as we go through yeah. the season. But what's really interesting is what ha what's happening with the people who are telling us these stories. Every yeah, day. for sure. I, I'm enjoying the fact that, you know, this season is going through the beginning of, of COVID and yeah. kind of, uh, you know, at this at this point where we've watched, it's, it's okay. It's, it's kind of a thing that's out there, but nobody's too worried about it. You know, yeah. we'll kind of cover it at some point, but yeah. you know, it, you know, what's coming. You know, what's like coming. you absolutely know what's coming. And I think the best part about it is you've got eight episodes to watch these people squirm their way yeah. to where we know it's going to go. Where were you when you, when you were at the beginning of 2020, Mike, when you were, when you were hearing all about it, did you? Well, I'll that? tell you where I was. I was at Sundance. So it was the wow. end of January and we were in we, 2020 and we were at Sundance and it was just starting to come out and, and we didn't even really know what it was at that point. But it was as soon as we got back, it was basically that's when we went into the, the whole lockdown mess. Right. With that. And it, I mean, it was kind of it was pretty scary, but it was also you assumed Okay, I can do this for a week. No yeah. big deal. Okay, yeah. a month. Okay, okay, a month. I yeah. can handle that. Yeah. And it just kept going. It did. It kept going. Yeah. And for and for me, it was uh I had come out to LA to sh shoot the show. Yeah. In February of 2020. We had just had this huge sort of we'd been at the Golden Globes. It was my yeah. Golden <laughs> Globes. It was very exciting. I was like season two and I was ready. We had talked a little bit about Mia's arc and what was going to happen with yeah. her season. And it was so exciting. And we'd even um, filmed a couple of episodes. And at that time, Holland Taylor wasn't on the show. We had another actress that uh, portrayed Holland Taylor's. Oh. Role. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic actress. I don't know if I can say her name, but anyway, I loved her too. I mean, the, the cast. You can tell me off camera. I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> off the record um love her as an actress and she was incredibly yeah. generous and so anyway um we had started shooting and everything and they were like listen we have to take the show back we have to take the show down for a couple of weeks but we'll be back at the end of march and right march became not anytime soon maybe may and then maybe may became june july and, yeah uh, then I started getting calls about other television shows that were going to start shooting, including Yellowstone and, you know, another movie that I wanted to do. Yeah. And a huge level of precaution that everyone was starting to take because of how contagious this virus 
had turned out to be. Like now we had sort of realized that not only is it that spread by, you know, shaking hands, but it's spread by just being in the vicinity of something. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even get near anybody. You can't get near anybody. Like just stay at home, which was easier for me to do to, in LA than it was for me to do in New York. So yeah, yeah what a whirlwind, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure you agree. It's We're going to be dealing with the repercussions for probably decades before it's completely, I don't know. I don't know if it would be normal, normal, but before we can become completely adjusted to it, the new normal. At least. I also think it's like a real interference of our, you know, our personal and social freedoms like we have to get used to the idea that right. <laughs> taking care of ourselves and taking care of other people around us actually has to be a foremost thought in our minds all the time now and it's yeah. really that's a real you know trick well it's difficult because we don't like to be inconvenienced you know just as a people we don't like being inconvenienced and and this this whole thing is inconvenient but you have to do it not even so much for yourself, but for everybody else, especially people that you love, you got to take precautions. Well, and I think that nobody, I don't think anybody wants to hurt anybody or give anybody a virus or et cetera, et cetera. But I just think we have, so uh, we just really have to start thinking about what it means to be a responsible citizen, like you're saying, in a different yeah. way. Like we just haven't been thinking about that for-, for That's years. right. You know what I mean? and. That's right. And hand ourselves over to that kind of thinking is, you know, you understand, oh, we got to go out and vote or, oh, you have to stop at the red light or, oh, do you know what I mean? That's our civic <laughs> duty, right? That's our civic responsibility. But aligned with that now is every single day you, you know, walk into a grocery store or in a gym or in a department store, depending upon yeah. our level of, um, our level of the virus coming back, we have to be masked up. I mean, it's it's no more inconvenient than, you know, I lived through September 11th uh, here yeah. in New York City, that shift that we had to make and wearing masks. Yeah, that's true. Our, our yeah, absolutely. Our feet, taking our shoes off and getting on the plane yeah. and standing along. We do that now, 10, 20 years later. We yeah, that's right. That's right. It's, no, it's, I mean, it's still inconvenient, but we do it without any real complaint anymore. Yeah. 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 You're exactly right. So I, we had three grandbabies that were born right around 2020. So so we went through that whole not being able to see them when they were really little. That that was probably the hardest thing for us. That's super hard, right? Yeah. Busy in 2019. Huh? I'll tell you what. <laughs> we're doing a lot of things. That that uh shoot. <laughs> but that was hard for we did a lot of talking through the screen door you know did you yeah Were yeah you that was hard through the screen door is that what you guys did yeah that's what we uh that's what we did which for the 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 youngest with the babies they didn't they didn't really they hadn't connected with us yet but we, the the one that was actually born in 2019 my grandson he he was used to us so of course, not being able to come out to us, yeah, it, that was rough. It, I mean, it had everybody in tears. And then it's been, it's been interesting. Oh, hello. <laughs> My dog, hold on for just one second. Yeah. You should just let it play. Really, I will next time because they're gonna. Yeah. They keep. That's the beauty of Zoom. Is it? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> is that beautiful? Uh, well, it's. Thank goodness for Zoom. I know. Right? No, we, we <laughs> nobody would have been able to talk at all. So. Nobody, right? Exactly. It's been pretty good. So, so I jumped way ahead because I was so excited about the morning show. So I got into that, but oh, it's all I usually. I usually like to start by, by asking, you know, what made you want to get into entertainment? How did you go about that? What made me want to get into it? I think, uh, um, you know, I think it very much felt like a calling for me, like really yeah. one of those things where 
I was not very happy in my life. And I was really, really trying to figure it out. Like I was really literally trying to figure out what am I going to do with this crazy life of mine? I'm miserable. I'm unhappy. Like it's very, very difficult time. And I, I think what I wanted was an opportunity to sort through my um, unhappiness and my um, disaffection for right. whatever was going on. And um, I was pregnant at the time and, um, I had been a singer for a long time. And after I had done all of my, you know, machinations of the music industry, and, um, <laughs> I had wrote a lot of songs and hadn't really seen the success I wanted. I decided that it was really about, um, uh, just finding a way to self-express that wasn't necessarily connected to commerce. Yeah. Um, and for me, that was acting. So I went to school, I went to grad school. And uh, really, it was an ability to sort of craft a life around how to how to be an actor that really right. brought me into entertainment fully. I knew I could be a mom and also be an actor because actors don't, we don't work all the time, right? Right. Like I could take my daughter to school this morning or to the get get her shot this morning after having been out of school. Yeah. Um, I could stay home with her after we finish our interview. I have a couple of other things to do today, but I don't have a nine to five. You know what I mean? Like to me, yeah. it's in my life. And it's not as much about entertainment for me as it is about being able to have a space where I can fully, uh, fully uh, connect to what I think is my purpose in the world? I mean, it sounds pretty lofty, yeah. but it's very true. No, I, I actually, I, I love that because I, I haven't heard it expressed that way, but that is a big advantage yeah. of working in entertainment. You've, you've got the ability to somewhat control your schedule a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you do. And, and when your children are younger, you have more control. You yeah. just get on a plane and bring them with you. But, you know, the age where my kids are now, it's not, not as possible for me to do, but yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You've got time to talk to, you know, some bozo in West Virginia that's <laughs> you're not a bozo. dragging you on a podcast. Yeah, you're not a bozo. <laughs> but it, but it really was about, you know, I don't know. You know, I will say at first it was an ego conversation. It was like, Oh, I want to see myself. I want to, you know, have people applaud for me. Like that was sure. very, very early on, Mike. But I think you get to a certain point uh, as an actor where this shit is just so fucking hard. Like it's really, yeah. really hard. The audition, you get turned down, the rejection, you know, you don't have any money. You have to, you know, make the ends meet. You've got two kids. Right. I'm a single mother. So it was just like, is there anything else you can do? <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> Just think yeah. of something else. And, you know, it, it just kept coming back to this incredible ability to, it just, opportunities just kept opening up for me. Right. And so um, it felt like this, it really was where I was supposed to be. Yeah, that's, I, that's great. And it is acting. I have so much admiration for it because I, I think people assume that it's not that difficult and it's so difficult because most of the time you're just dealing with rejection or no's. I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's it's such a uh, no, it's, it's not easy to you act. Do with a lot of that, but you also I would say it, there really is a business aspect to it. Do you know what I sure. mean? Like there's um there are after a while certain people who will come look for you to work with you. Do you know what right. I mean? And um as a as a actor, there's crafts you know, you craft your work, right? There's a kind That's of right. so many talented people out here, but not everyone knows how to craft their talent into a kind of a work space. And I would say it's the same thing for the business of acting, you know, not everyone knows how, not all actors know how to make their, uh, their career to develop it into a business mode. And that right. takes a certain level of craftsmanship too do you know what i mean um well an experience too i would assume that's not something that you know right from the beginning no it isn't and i and i i think that there are some actors who are better businessmen business yeah. women, so they last longer right I mean, it's, not, it's not just about money and etc but it's like i can organize my day i do my work 
I go do my thing. I, yeah. you know, focus. You know, there's just lots of different aspects to having an acting career and being in the entertainment industry outside of just learning your lines and, and, and being on time to work. So, yeah. um, and I would assume at some point that becomes the easier side of it. It's the most fun. Yeah. It's the most fun side of it. I would say, you know, yeah. uh, walking in and, and getting hugs from your cast members and yeah. you know, watching them do their work and, you know, going to award shows and walking red carpets. That's all the fun part, right? That's right. fun, fun stuff to do. Did so the red carpet stuff? I've always been curious. How do the first time, the first time you have a, a red carpet event that you get to go to, how do you know what you are supposed to wear? Ooh. You know, how do you figure that out? You know, what, how do you go? Okay, this isn't this is nice. Normally, this isn't red carpet nice. Yes, it's such a good question. Question. I mean, I'm always more dressed up than anybody else around me. <laughs> so I just take my regular style up like two notches. Yeah, okay. Um, but then, you know, I'm lucky enough to have somebody who helps me. Her name is Jean Ann Williams. And yeah. she's like, gets clothes that people send her and are like, put this on this, this actress. <laughs> That would help me and my so you know you get lucky enough to find designers who are like i'd love to dress that person or this that and the other um okay yeah, yeah that's it's your that's, normal style but up two notches yeah you're just taking it up a notch yeah i, I need a person probably two notches yeah i may, maybe three maybe three in your case at least three it, it may be three maybe three all right yeah I guess start making some contacts. Yeah, or to, you know. <laughs> so I was going to ask you. I'm sure you've got stuff in your closet. Come on. There's there's stuff in there. There's stuff. there's stuff in there. Yeah. I don't bring it out too often, but it's in there. It's Great. In there. On, the next, on the next interview, we'll, we'll go through the red carpet. We'll dress it up. Yeah. We'll fancy it up. I'll dress it up, but you, then, but you got to dress it down. I know that's true because my yeah. dress up, I'll, I'll be in here in a, a, a yeah. John Batista Valley and you'll be like, I I'm under, you know, I'm underdressed. I'm wearing my best. I'm still underdressed. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to ask you if, if you, cause you, you grew up in Nashville, you had the, uh, you know, the degree that had to do with uh, voice and opera. And yeah, I was like, Western. yeah, and yeah, did you, yeah, did did you pursue a singing career at some point? Apparently you did for a little I while. I did. I, when I got yeah. out of college, I was, I wanted to be, you know, I don't know, any, any, any of the stars at that time. And um, little known fact, I had a showcase with Tommy Mottola at the time. And, you know, it, it was just, it was sort of this interesting experience where um, I worked in the music industry and I wrote songs and I played it all like the bars and the clubs yep. in New York City and, you know, uh, but it just, it just did not fall my way. And uh, I eventually worked in venture capital, uh, oh, wow. made some good money <laughs> skills there, made enough money where I left you know, at a young age, you know, left venture capital, like I got it, like I figured it out. But, you know, it was really this experience where I had made a ton of money. I had a lot of stuff, had an apartment on Fifth Avenue, very young, living that life. And I was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no good. It was, I was miserable. I had everything that I thought. I want a great husband. I was pregnant. I was, and, uh, and I was like, oh, this is not what I want. I was like, right. I have a midlife crisis very early in my life. And and uh, that's when I jumped off the deep end and, and uh, went into acting. What was, so I know you did, well, let me ask you this. Did, when you were in high school, did you do any theater or were you in the band? Anything oh, like I was that? such a theater nerd. I was such a, <laughs> such a you know, me and uh, Reese talk about this because she went to Harvard Hall. Yeah. And I went to St. Cecilia. Yeah. And um, and they had a great theater program in St. Cecilia. And I studied voice and opera at Vanderbilt. They, Vanderbilt University had a really great, you know, opera program there. Yeah. 
I was on the Amy Grant Scholarship. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know there was an Amy Grant Scholarship. Yeah, well, there was. I don't know if there is anymore. But uh, I was on the Amy Grant Scholarship, and that was, that was a, you know, I loved it. I love Amy Grant and Vince Gill. Well, I was going to say, her and Vince, that's, that was pretty good. They could sing a little bit. That's like that's like Nashville royalty. It's like yeah. Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. Like it's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, yeah, and I do sing, sing from now every now and then. In fact, I'm putting together something right now to sort of get back in it a little bit. It's Ooh. kind of exciting. Yeah. Well, when you're ready, you come on the show. I will. You, you can sing. We'll premiere it here. Yes. Who opinionated? Oh that sounds like fun, actually. It would be. Yeah. I'll I'll dress up for that one. Yeah. If you bring the grandkids, then it'll be really, it'll bring a lot. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's how I can tell you whether or not you can actually sing. Yeah. If they dance, yeah. then it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they all, you know, they're... So we just had we just had our fourth one. He's just a, he's just a month old. But the other three, we got... Uh, Let's see, one and a half, two, and two and a half right now. And and they will dance. So that's the delicious age. Oh my gosh. It's the being a grandparent is so much better than being a parent. And being a parent was great. Yeah. But you get all the good and very little of the bad as a grandparent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I heard. I'm actually, well, I won't go there, but I love children. I love babies. I love them a lot. I'll bring them. I'll bring them on. It may be a totally different type of podcast, but I'll well, bring them on. That's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm into that. I'm into that. So you obviously pretty nerdy. So I loved you on Luke Cage. Oh. You did such a great job on that. So, so, But my question wasn't about Luke Cage. It was about evil because you got to, to work with Mike on evil. So I was curious, was the connection the reason you got to work on evil or was that just happenstance? You know, that casting director called me in a couple of times for evil. Yeah. Uh, I've known that cat, the guy who casts these shows on CBS. I've known him forever. Yeah. Uh, since the very beginning of my career. And uh, he kept calling me to come in. And I said, I don't know why you keep calling me in these <laughs> parts to come in and do this show. I said, I I know, I know Asif Monvi. I did a play with Asif here in New oh, York. Yeah. I know Mike Coulter from obviously Luke Cage. I didn't yeah. know Katya, but I said, why are you bringing me in? I worked with um, Michelle uh, and Robert King before. I was like, why are you bringing me in on this stupid stuff? Bring me in on something <laughs> really good, like a really good part where these guys are not gonna be worried about me like freaking out or to, and then That's right. bring you the possessed woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. he's like, I brought you a good part. And I had All to right. learn Aramaic had to learn to speak Aramaic. Well, you did really well with it. Labor Day weekend. <laughs> That's a fun weekend. It was. It wasn't. <laughs> but they're fantastic there. They're. Yeah. I mean, I had the best time on that show. And uh, uh, I don't think Mike was at all prepared for how how crazy I got as a possessed woman. <laughs> Well, so he'd worked with you before. I mean, he wasn't prepared at all. He had no idea that you could because take it to there. Character on Luke Cage, she was very sort of. She was, yeah. Uh, but the character on, on uh, Evil, she was throwing up. She was like, yeah. she was like ah. it was it was upsetting. It was very intense, wasn't it? Yeah, very intense. Yeah, but good. It was really good. They had her bloody. They had the the the, the you know the fake little yeah crown of thorns there. She had stigmata. It, it was I know. It, you know, it, it when when you first came on the uh, show, it took me a minute to realize that that was you, and I was like, oh, I know who that is. It took everybody. <laughs> it took all my friends. Like, are you on evil this week? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was going to be on Evil. What you? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Did I did I see that you're you're in the um, the Sex in the City, whatever we're calling it, reboot, oh, sequel, oh, whatever. Just like that. It's called Just Like That. Just Like That. That's right. Oh my God! I'm so excited. It's great to do a comedy after having done like you know yeah. we were shooting for like it felt like a really long time. It was like six or seven. 
eight months maybe of shooting those episodes. It was really great to get out and do a comedy. We're doing it. We have a table read today. Really? Six. Oh, you do? I did it. I did. I've done one table read in my life and it was just as a favor. So I was just filling in. Yeah. Oh, you were and, filling in your, I've done that. I've been a table read filler in her. Yeah. I was a fill. So I got, you know, I only had like a, a few lines. I was so nervous because everybody else there was an actor and I was just, I, I was all stressed out about it. And I, I prepared, I practiced, I, you know, I just, I just wanted to get it out without screwing it up, you know? <laughs> and well then, so it got to my part, my little part that I'd waited like an hour and a half to get to, to me. And one of the other actors accidentally read the lines. And at the time I was like, whew, I, I dodged a bullet then. But then a little bit later, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, well, wasn't oh, meant to be. <laughs> we'll have to bring you in for your own personal table read. That's right. Give me something easy. I can be the, you know, the the body or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun experience, though. Even even though it didn't, you know, it didn't work out that time for me, it was still wonderful. I had it the best is. Time. I mean, it is a fun experience. You know, this is very, it's a very telltale experience. This is when, when, uh, a lot of table reads is where a lot of actors get fired. Do you know this? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so you can get why is that? I, because once they hear you read it and hear what it sounds like, and yeah. all the chemistry of all the other people, they're like, Oh, that for, especially if they're already on the fence for you. Ah, uh, you so there's some that. stress with the table read, stressful, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wondered that because I it just, just from my observation, it looked like you had some that were very over the top with, with the reading. You had some that were kind of downplayed it, you know, it was more just like I would read it or something, you know? And then you you had some that were, it seemed like they were really trying to get into the character. I just, yeah, I yeah, well, that, I was always one of those people that was always like going to the hilt. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to get fired. So if they asked yeah. me to cry, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was into it, tears in the whole nine yards. Well, yeah, I guess if if the stakes are that high, you'd have to. I mean, I they were always that high for me because I never wanted to lose a job over. Yeah. Table. That was just ridiculous to me. <laughs> I mean, I, at the, I'll sit at the table, do the part, and then get fired. That seems extraordinary. I could oh, that'd be that. awful. Yeah, but then it just looked like, I remember I was reading a table with Simone before Simone Mystic and I became really, really good friends. And she was just like. Yeah, take it down a notch. <laughs> I was like, what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing you didn't, though. Oh, no. You're right. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't hear you did. I didn't hear you did. I kept it right up on hours, right? You know. But anyway. So, are you on the new season of Yellowstone? Oh, God. It's such a good question. Huh? Everybody wants to know. Oh, Hayes yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, is it a secret? Did Willa Hayes do it? Yeah, did she? Did she come back? Did she get it? Did she get the SmackDown? What happened? I can't say anything. Oh, man. It comes out pretty soon, though. It does. Not it comes out on November 7th. Listen, yeah, it's not I, too long away. I have incredible respect for Taylor Sheridan and all the producers. You know, I'm about to give you the spiel. Oh, okay. I like the spiel. I feel, actually, I really do. I, I think Taylor and all the folks that work on that show are fantastic. Obviously, I'm a big yeah. fan of Kelly Riley and uh, yeah. Time and season three. But I, I really, I cannot spoil one second of season four for the Yellowstone fans. I can't. You know, as as fans, we want to know everything, but also be surprised. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do get this question a lot, and and I think you don't want me to spoil it for you. You really don't. If no, I not you really. What is going to happen? You're going to be like, God dang it! Why'd you spoil it? Yeah, why'd you tell me that? Why'd you tell me that? I, I mean, I said I wanted to know, but you spoiled it for me now, and it's just like, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Want to know? So, uh, I'm not going to say anything about Yellowstone except that. Um, 
I, I think you guys are really, really going to love season four. I think you're going to love it. Oh, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Yeah. I, I, I know. I'm inferring. What now? I'm inferring. I, I think I... I think I know the answer, but I, I keep it to myself. <laughs> we know the answer. Who is your favorite character on Yellowstone, though? Be honest. Besides Willa Hayes, we know. It's like. I'm a I'm a Kevin Costner fan. Oh, you are? I sh- I was sure you were going to say Rick. Well, yeah, he's awesome. Uh, but I mean, Kevin Costner. You know, I, I've I've liked him since Silverado. You know, I mean, he's he's pretty amazing. He is. Yeah. But the whole cast, I mean, good grief. What a, that that cast is perfect. It is. It's a great cast. And yeah. Gil Birmingham and Mo Brings Plenty and you know, Wes Bentley. Oh my God. Just so many. Yeah, people. even even the guest stars on that show are, are so good. Oh my god. Yeah. So great. I like Westerns too. I mean it's it's kind of it's a modern western, I think. It is, and they and they don't and there's nowhere else where they have it, and nobody else you know, writes it as well as, as Taylor. Yeah. I feel like he just sort of, I mean, he's from a different time, you know, he's like, yeah, it's almost like a, a Western soap opera. It is. Oh, oh, yeah. it is. It is. Yeah. It is. You know, one of the interesting parts about season three was when we were starting to shoot season three with, uh, when I was doing this scene in episode nine, season three, where Kelly and I go at it, you know, in her office, and I'm sitting at her desk, <laughs> very famous. I like her. Oh, well, that was the best scene. Right. It was very funny at yeah. the end of it. But, you know, when I came in to do the scene, I think she really expected to be kind of like, and, you know. <laughs> but when I started the scene, I was like, yeah, I'm here. And you should have known I'd be here. And why didn't you know? Because you're a very smart woman, Beth Dutton. You know, and I don't think that she was ready for that. And she was like, one second, I just need one second because I wasn't expecting Karen to do all of that. You know, <laughs> moment, you know, it was really, it was cool because it was like, she was like, I'm going to meet this character yeah. where, where you, where I need to meet her versus you know, asking me to do something other than what I had already sort of thought was an idea. Yes. And uh, it was just like meeting a really fantastic actor in a way that you just never expected. And so. Um, That's so cool. It was cool. I, I, I mean, did, so did they give you leeway on on kind of how you portrayed that? Or were you, were you, you know, pretty tight with the script? You know, in season three, I was brought in and I, I think that they said, you know, we might use Karen for a few episodes. Yeah. And um, I don't think that they thought that they were going to use me for as many episodes as they ended up using me for. But it's always great when you're working with a writer or producers and they're inspired by what you do with the character. And they're right. like, well, we want her to come back. We want her to back. It's always so, you know, it makes you feel so good about your work. And um so I, I did not expect to be on Yellowstone for as long as I was, but I did bring a kind of a, what we, what as actors we call, I brought a take on the character. That's and, right. uh, I think that they thought, yeah, that's the right, that's the right character for this world. Um, and I, Willa was never over the top. She was never, you know, making faces for the camera. Right. I, mean, I genuinely think I know people like this i know women like this business well did yeah did you work with women like that when you were back in the yeah i mean i think world? i think that to be honest willa hayes is based on my perception of a lot of different people but yeah. you know my mother was quite the businesswoman although she was a teacher and a scientist i sort of based her her um even tempered behavior on uh, men that I saw, you know, Barack Obama, I think was also one yeah. of the inspirations. Just people who are really know what they're talking about. They know where they're coming from. They're going to get the deal done. And then they're going to go back <laughs> and do the other thing that they plan to do. And in my mind, I thought Willa Hayes is not going to make it past episode five. She's got right. the, seven. the Duttons are going to take the money and that's going to be <laughs> so always. It was always like that, you know, it was never going to be where she had to get into a thing with Beth Dutton or, you know, and my business partner wasn't going to be like, I'm hopping off this plane. I'm doing this thing deal out here and, you know, whatever, Yeah. you know, 
have a good glass of brandy and get back on the plane and go and go do the rest of my business with the shareholders back in New York or whatever. She's a capitalist. You know, she doesn't have time yeah. for anything but making money. And uh, yeah, I know this woman really well. I know a lot of people like that. I live here in New York City and, you know, the stock and trade uh, in New York City isn't, you know, cattle or yeah. uh, whatever. Stock and trade here is money. That's that's what this right. world is, you know. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. I think that's interesting. You've you've taken some life experience and been able to use it in your acting. That's, that's pretty good. Oh, for sure. And I think that that idea of, you know, what Taylor really writes about in that show is sovereignty, you know? Who's, yeah. Who's, who's the sovereign in this world? Who's the most powerful in this world? And all of the characters who come into the show are archetypes of what that looks like. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And I think that in her world, Willa Hayes is, you know, money sovereign, you know? She's, yeah. Money is king in her world. she got a ton of it to throw around. And uh, and what happens when you throw you throw around your currency and no one cares? Huh? Not much. It's called Yellowstone. That's what happens. Yeah, that's right. Pretty... Oh, just Yellowstone. That's all. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> no big deal. Great concept for a television show. When no <laughs> one cares about money, and uh, the most important aspect of their entire existence is. Uh, is control and power over land. It's, yeah. it's, it's as American as uh, apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it actually is. When you start uh, intertwining money and land and power, you know, it's pretty American. That's American. That's yeah. America. Yeah. I always get excited when you, when you show up on a, a show because you show up, it seems like, on a lot of, um, I'll say, nerdy shows. You know, the, the ones that that my people watch because <laughs> you get yeah, nerdy people. You've done uh, Nosferatu. Oh yeah. You, you had that big run on the Americans. Yeah. The Amer yeah. Americans. Yeah. I mean, you show up. Boy, that was really, that was a great, that was so sad. Americans, you know, you needed a full, Here's the interesting part about doing television for a television actor. And yeah. the part about is doing streaming television versus regular television where the show right. shows up every week. If it shows up every week, you know, it gives the audience an opportunity to let that story sink in. You can go deeper, you can be heavier, you can do all that's right. Of, you know, but in streaming services, there has to be some sort of hook in episode one that gets you to episode three and hooked at episode two yeah. that comes back in episode six, do you know? So you could actually sit down for hours and end up involved in a story you, you don't realize you're in. And as an actor, yeah. you know, you want to know what story you're telling. Um, I think The Morning Show does a great job of, of you know, hooking yeah, agree. in different, different ways. But back before there was streaming television, I don't know if anybody remembers that, um, the Americans was really good at dropping little seeds and Easter eggs yeah. in the stories that would later on, you know, be like, I That's right. as you went through the season's arc. And, um, you know, the character Lisa that I played on that show, you know, it was, she was so um, interesting to me and in that she helped um, Carrie's character navigate into this sort of, you know, spy, spying on American defense and, and technology. But um, she was so broken, that poor Lisa. She had a, she had poor a- Poor Lisa. Time. She had a tough time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I hadn't thought of that, but if I remember right, the Americans started on FX. FX, right. And then, but then they eventually did it, did it stay on FX all day? It didn't, right? It went to kind of more of a streaming type nope, of format. No, 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 it so it was FX the whole way. It ended on FX, started on FX, it ended on FX, and then it went to Netflix. And it, uh, like, it. like the next That's level it. of awareness on this show. I mean, yeah. it did kind of have a niche following. Yeah. While it was it, on FX. If you knew, you knew. If you didn't. That's you know. right. Once it gets to Netflix, though, then it's a, then it's bingeable. 
I mean, then everybody, I mean, there's a whole nother level where people were like, knew who I was. It's a whole nother level. Yeah. Which was interesting because I, I think I finished the Americans in their episode, in their season four. And uh, they went on for just two more seasons. Maybe I think that's how it was. That's but, probably what happened. They should have kept you around. They probably lasted they should, longer. They, they had to kill somebody. So, <laughs> spoiler alert: I die in season four on the Americans. If you haven't seen it, but yeah, um, yeah, spoiler. That's that's great. So, so I know we, I know we got to wrap up, but I wanted to ask you about, and I want to get the name right. Um, you have been working on. A, th- a show or a movie called What We Do Next. What We Do Next, that's right. Yeah. Can you tell me a little about that? I can. What We Do Next is about um, uh, a Black female politician. Uh, yeah. Who started out as a community organizer. And uh, during that time, she was dating a, a, a guy, uh, a white guy who was worked at a white shoe law firm. And... Uh, she met a very troubled Latina young girl, teenager. And uh, at the time she gave her some money to get out of a very difficult family situation. Right. Uh, but this uh, young girl uses the money to buy a gun and uh, kill her father. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, so as it turns out, this young Latina girl did not, um, impugn the character of this community organizer and ends up right. going to prison. So when we start the movie, it's 15 years later. She's now in her you know, late 20s, early 30s. And um, this community organizer is a character I play, is now a city council person and gunning for a huge political game and is right. you know, trying to articulate her ambition in politics. But this young girl comes back and says, hey, I did you a favor, you need to help me get my life back. And so that's where the story unfolds. I did it with oh, um, Michelle and Tamilia and yeah. um, Corey Stoll. Yeah, of course. By um, my friend, Stephen Belver. And, uh, you know, we, we did that in Kentucky over a couple of weeks. It was in October of 2020. And uh, it was just, <laughs> it was the most difficult, uh and challenging thing i've ever done we did it's pretty fast it was two weeks yeah kentucky and um it was it was let me tell i i i was so vulnerable in that process because it was such a difficult personal time for me but also it was we were in the middle of pandemic and it was the first thing that i i had filmed and uh and I had gone back to shooting after the pandemic had uh, had started, and there was no vaccine in sight. Like we were not, like we were just kind of, you know, we had oh, wow. up. We were like testing every day and doing all the things, <laughs> but it was really hard. It was really yeah, hard. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a yeah, great, I, great. It had to be difficult with the um, uh, the the more intimate scenes. You know, if you're if you're um, yeah, it'd be difficult, I think, to to go through how you would normally show affection on a movie, or even just being in close quarters with somebody. I don't, I don't know. Did you have to deal with some of that? I mean, we didn't have to do all of that. I will say that obviously we do that on the Sex and the City reboot that I'm working on, yeah. like that. Like it's you know a lot about love and relationships and et cetera. Yeah. So there's a lot of that going on, and and uh, thank God there's less to worry about. But, um, you know, there, er, on every set I've been on since we've started filming um, anywhere, there has been, uh, there's been a COVID case to pop up. And right. you just never know where it's going to be. You don't know if you're going to be in proximity to it. So that's right. Um, that's right. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty frightening no matter, no matter what. I mean, the actors are constantly tested because we walk around without our masks. Sure. Um, we are more likely to infect our crew yeah. than the crew is to infect us, right? Right. We walk around without our mask on. Um, but yeah, that was a, a really extraordinary experience. I hope that, that that movie gets to see the light of day. Um, it Me was, too. That was what I was going to ask. Is that, you know, do, do you have somewhere that it's going to debut yet? We're working on it. I am supporting yeah. it 100%. Thank you for asking about it because I think they'd love to 
Well, it sounds like just a terrific story, so I, was, I was excited yeah. about it. It was pre, you know, uh, all of the stuff that was going on with the politics of voting, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What was really fascinating about it was that we were filming it right after all of the protests in Louisville. Oh. Yeah. And so, yeah. Was, you know, we were trying to get around. There were boarded up stores and you know people were very nervous about all of the social unrest and how it was going to affect our filming and shooting schedule and it was really it was interesting it was probably most yeah it's such a i guess interesting is the right word but we're we're living in very interesting times we'll say it that way something and it just keeps getting more yeah. and more uh the, the imperative is to get involved yeah to not be an armchair activist. And let me be honest, I'm, a, I'm an armchair activist. Do you know what I mean? Like- I do, yeah. I, I have two kids and, you know, I like the comfort of my home, but I, I don't, you know, if I have to go out and, you know, yes. protest and walk and I'm like, well, wait, what are we doing? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so why, who's organizing this? Like, why are we doing this? Again? That's the hard part. It's easy to support a, a cause much, more difficult to become active that's right that's absolutely yeah. right and you know i'm like if I, you know it's but it uh but it's what's required now it's yeah. what's required like you really do have to get involved even more than ever and so in 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 most aspects of my life now um uh, whether it's my kids school or if it's my acting or um if it's causes that i think are important as far as social justice um um gender politics, race politics, yeah. I'm involved. I, I have That's to, great. Yeah. I think we don't have a choice now, but to be involved. I agree. I agree. It, and and it, it's, it's going to take all of us to actually affect change, I think. So. Yeah, I'm a common ground kind of a, we yeah. all have common ground. Let's stand on that ground and link up arms and see what we can get done. Right. Well, you know, when I was in school, that was the whole we are the world yeah. situation where you did, or the hands across America. Yeah. You know, where you, during school, we had to, uh, we didn't have to, but we were given the opportunity to kind of hold hands with everybody. And it, that was supposed to represent, you know, the same thing happening throughout, uh, uh, you know, the country. So maybe back we need to get back to some of that. Back in the late 1800s when you were in school. <laughs> <laughs> That's not far off. Exactly. You're pretty close. Is that what they did back in 18? Yeah, that's what we did. That's what we did with our, you know, our potato sacks. And, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> After having walked 10 miles to school every day. I mean, I think that's incredible. It's incredible. I actually did walk to school. It wasn't 10 miles, but it was probably half a mile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, there was a hill. Uh, uh. There was a hill. I do remember snow on occasion. Oh, uh, did you? <laughs> was that in West Virginia? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Karen, thank you so much. This is, uh, I knew it was going to be great. I've been such a fan of yours for, for a long time. You really do. Every time you show up in a show, I'm like, oh, it's going to be better. Oh. You, you play the best characters. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I really hope you'll watch in just like that. I think, I think you're going to like it, actually. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, and that's uh, you know that's fairly close. I think uh, if you were in Kentucky, you're probably just three or four hours away from us. Yeah, no, I mean I'm shooting that here in New York, but I I also think it's not you know they're not in this show they're not trying to go for the oh okay yeah yeah you're talking about not, Sex in the City. I'm talking about Sex in the City. They're not, yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. trying to go for the. No, I'm excited for that one. For the 20s and 30s sort of crew, we're talking about yeah. getting those folks in in their 40s and. In that I mean, it was such a fun show. And, you know, you had a lot of, of course, you had a lot of uh, uh, women fans, but there's a lot of us guy fans out there, too. I We're just not I, as vocal. Yeah, I know. I know a yeah. lot of guys who are like, hey, yeah, it's I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be great. It's yeah. going to be great. So, OK, so before I let you go. Is there anything else that you have upcoming that we can kind of keep an eye out for? You know, there's a little something I did with Mark Duplass, with the Duplass brothers. I did a movie with them uh -huh. this past year, too. Um, but really, I think the big thing is 
the morning show season two yeah. we've got seven more episodes wait eight more episodes yeah and uh we'll be um you know we'll be peeling them off every friday for the next eight weeks and uh i hope all of your folks will check to tune in oh, i know they will show. i know they will and it's uh it's a Apple TV's got some good stuff going on. It's right really now. good. I mean, it really is. We love our Ted Lasso. We like a good comedy, oh but every now and then, we love Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Everybody loves Ted Lasso. Been watching the uh, uh, Foundation that just came out. It's good. really good. Yeah, it's it really good. good. It's really it. good. If you, especially if you're if you're an Asimov, you know, fan. That's oh, pretty good. I, I like the truth be told because I'm a fan. Yeah. Of and I like to see because I love Alfred Woodard. Oh, excellent. Yeah, of course. Of course. So will we see mask wearing on the morning show at some point? Towards the very, very end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very, I mean, everybody knows what's coming. If you know the morning show is, you know, with the COVID in the background and it's set for us to roll up to right what happens you know is the covid you know what's coming i think what's interesting yeah. is how we get there and 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 to cherry pick those people who uh are wearing masks and uh who are going to end up you know you know making it through yeah. to the end of the season that's season. right <laughs> crossing our fingers yeah yeah let's keep we got to keep mia we'll see i know we'll see we'll see oh well, I do have one more question. Do you have any plans to do theater in the future? I know you've done oh, it in the past. I would love to do theater in the future. I'm looking at some plays. Yeah. I'm so excited to be looking at plays. I watched the Tony Awards. I was like, did you see Tony Awards? Oh, of course. Yeah. So it was so thrilling to see people on stage and dancing and, and uh, you know. <laughs> Adrian won won the best leading actress in musical, which she really deserved as Tina Turner. And I mean, I was so thrilled to see. Yeah, her. she's so good. So good. Oh my God. We uh we're good friends with uh Michael um Severus, who oh. uh yeah, who's who's won a couple of Tonys, but he's no. from here. He's from like twenty minutes away from oh from my us. God. Yeah. He was in fun home. Could he have been yeah. better in no. He could not. I don't think he could have been better. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's, he's amazing. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, last thing before you go, where can we find you on social media? You can find me at the Karen Pittman on Twitter and at the Karen Pittman. On Twitter. <laughs> That's pretty good. You didn't have to put any numbers or a a, a dash or anything. But you, you're you're it. You're the Karen Pittman. I'm, I'm the Karen. <laughs> fantastic publicists i'm the karen that's right that's right i bet you there's a karen pittman too out there somewhere there is and i love her there <laughs> and the other karen pittman she's a badass oh that's that see now that's nice that's nice because there's some other uh, uh mike walls out there or mike wall um they're, they're not badasses though yeah, yeah i'm looking i'm like ah i'm I, I might be the best one. I, I don't know if that's good. Michael I might be the best one. <laughs> oh, Mike Walls, the only Mike Walls you need to know. I just, that's right. I need to go back and change all mine to put the in front of it. It, it, it sound, yeah, it'd be better. Yeah. It'd be better. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Karen, hold on one second. I'll hit, I'll hit. Recording in time. Well, how fun was that? Karen Pittman. I'm such a, I'm such a big fan of hers. You probably couldn't tell. I was I was trying to stay composed, but you know, those of you that watch the show, you know, I'm I'm a fan. I can get uh, a little uh, a little much. So I thought I did a good job reining it in. But she's such a wonderful actress. I think she's so talented. I'm so thrilled that I got a chance to uh, speak with her. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you guys so much for coming back week after week. We appreciate you so much. We don't take you for granted. Thank you. If you haven't done so already, please go to um, YouTube under Meistercom Pod. Give us a like and subscribe. That would really help us out. You can also go to our website, Meistercon.com. We've got, we're getting so close to 300 episodes now. 
and a couple hundred of those are interviews. So I know you will find tons of people that you like, enjoy, that you're fans of. So please check that out. The audio and the video are both on there. We've got a terrific blog from uh, Brett. He's such a talented writer. Um, and plus it'll, it'll let you know any uh, conventions or shows that we're working in the future. Next time I have Karen on, we may just do the episode on, she can just, it may just be me and her going shopping. She can, she can give me the, uh, the uh, fashion makeover. I could, that could be an, I don't know if that would be anything you would want to watch, but it could definitely help me out. So I, I think that's what I'm going to hit her up for. Maybe a little singing too. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Until next time. Bye.